community become more resilient because it's got an economic advantage in producing some, some power as to having some control and some ownership of um, an energy source, a source, a really important source for life um, today and in the future. I think that, um, you know, it's, it's crucial really yeah, for, for our future and for people who have less advantage than us, people who are in fuel poverty, and of course it is dealing with the climate change issue. And in a sense, I think, it's because politics and life is becoming increasingly remote. And local authorities could, could be the key to change in that situation. Offering... ...recognise the importance of heat networks and decentralised energy to, to help sort of uh, as part of this sort of the solution towards a low carbon future. Um, and that's where we've been focusing our energy. It's a lot of where um, the feasibility studies up until now are sort of that's the avenue it's been taking us down is this decentralised um, uh, future. Now, in addition to this, there, there are about another 50 communities that have either looked at, are looking at, have gone a very long way down the road in developing community energy projects. And uh, unfortunately, many of these are no longer no longer viable in the current um, in the current market with the changes to the feeding tariff that were introduced at the end of 2015. So, you know, potentially there's probably you know up to another 25 megawatts of projects out there that 